All right, so we're going to go back to listening to a little bit more of Spengalis and see where she's going next. And um, I always, often, I would say, I often have some thoughts or comments and as I'm listening to her that I like to share. And I like to say, you know, uh, you know, with the whole voting and, and registration, for me, it does not uh, signify... <laughs> And acceptance of Umar, for sure, it's not necess- It's a, probably a, a place or a, a place of agreement that I have with him. Uh, yeah, I have s- several points and places where I agree with what he's saying, uh, and at the same time, there are many, many other things about the dude that I thoroughly disagree with and I am thoroughly with uh, Spengali's in that regard yet I yet and at the same time there are certainly also aspects of what she says that I'm like hmm I don't quite agree with that and this is the take that I have on that particular point I see myself as a sort of in the middle of um, the two of them in in some some regards, so I, I yeah I'll leave it at that. So let's see where we're going and where she's going next in this particular video. See of myself being in any way embroiled in a situation like this and I, I just can't tolerate seeing black people putting themselves in this situation protest go right ahead and protest what I was upset about I didn't hear one peep from the city council member that represents this district Jumane Williams I looked him up and even more infuriating, and I'm getting, this is like all related to this comment, so just hang on. Even more infuriating, this occurred on August the 3rd. Where the hell were people at the August 8th city council meeting? This would be the situation where you would go and demand that the city council go after that business license. Okay. No, you can't do it overnight, but the police can only shut the place down temporarily they don't have the authority to shut a business down permanently unless they get a court order because the place is engaged in, in, in a criminal enterprise you need to go after this business license so this goes back to the influence you have as a people okay go out there and complain go out there and protest but like cynthia g stated then what you haven't taken any steps to engage the system to get a permanent result to get yourself in a situation to where you are a force to be reckoned. And if people want to continue to be elected and re-elected like this person, District Jumani D. Williams continues to be re-elected, why the hell wasn't he out there? Now, let me, let me say this, because I want you also to check the links on the bottom, because the Asian people up and were livid that assemblywoman she's doing the right thing okay assemblywoman diane richardson richardson did speak up wanting the place closed down and the chinese people and this is giving another example of don't tell me it doesn't matter what you do and if you vote or not because they are business owners in the district and they called her out because they said how can you automatically jump on their side now this you gotta this is a part about engagement and understanding how the system works thinking you're going to get something by just jumping up and protesting every time something happens and then you crawl back into wherever you were and you don't do anything the asian People, now you go and you read, please read on the bottom the titles of these people. They have organizations, national organizations for salon owners. So their concern, they said to Miss Richardson, and you can you can decide which side you want to jump on. How can you 
say we should be closed down and you indict us as a people when we have suffered crimes and murders and robberies and we don't indict an entire race. Now, he can say that all he wants. That's his position. He has a right to say that. But can he speak for those per- people in that salon that brutalized those people, that brutalized our people with broomsticks like they were animals circling prey? You see the picture up there, people? Animals circling prey after they hit these people, and now they're waiting the, waiting, waiting for them to what fall down so they can jump on them again. Look at them circling these people. So my point is, you are never going to get a result if you go cast a vote, and then that's it. You have to hold your elected officials accountable. If you think you're going to be taken seriously, Otherwise, you got another thing coming. So this person leaving this message up here, talking about a broken system. What do you mean a broken system? It is broke. The what system the is what it is. There is a yeah. process to yeah. change most things yeah. that you don't agree with. But you can't do it if you're a single person. You have to mobilize. Look how these Chinese people have mobilized. These business owners. And in charge of the National Association for Asian Salon Owners. What? Asian Salon Owners? Now. Yeah, sure. That's part of the system. You want to I mean, we have national organizations as well in most of the professions that we are in. You know, professional uh, arenas lawyers, doctors, social workers. We have a a national association of black social workers and there's a national association of social workers. So I'm not surprised that they have national organizations for what the work that they do. That is the dominant work seemingly that many of them do here in the states and so forth and in the communities. So it makes sense to me that they would be nationally organized to to, uh, you know, uh, protect uh, uh, their profession. Yet, it it may be a misnomer, if you will, to say that the system is quote-unquote broken. And at the same time, it's it's not uncommon, if you will, to, to, to recognize that for folks of African descent, the system has very rarely worked in our favor regardless of what we have done to assure as much as we have followed the rules and this has been going on for the last couple hundred of years whereby we follow the rules we have organized as a collective against some act of injustice that has been perpetrated against us and in response to that we have been further harmed many of us have been further harmed because when we end up coming together or somebody begins to speak up and begins to organize an effort that somebody is threatened and is taken out of commission, so to speak, and 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 um, which further supports the lack of justice for us. And I'm just like I say, when that's a primary symptom of of trauma is avoidance, uh, you know avoidance and yeah people who have been traumatized tend to tell their stories in highly tangential fashion and with a lot of you know sort of emotion quote unquote and as a result of that we have been taken un seriously if you will because what happens for victims is that they are ignored and or we have been further harmed. You know, I remember reading so many stories 
of the efforts of us all over, you know, this nation and Alabama back in the 40s and the 50s. This one, you know, who was murdered. This one who lost their business in their home because white folks were upset that they were organizing, that they were telling the truth about situations and that they were attempting to use the system to support those efforts. The system doesn't work in the same way for us that it works for other groups, period, in the damn story. That is just the reality of the situation that we are, we are here and enslaved in. And, you know, I mean, I'm after a couple hundred years, I'm kind of tired of, of doing any of it anymore because, you know, the outcome tends to be the same. Uh, one which way or the other. And and that to me is a is a major problem. Go back to a place that treats you like garbage. I can't stop it. But please, the complaints have got to stop if you are not going to engage. Now I want to give some examples. And this is why this message is And then so what says the complaint? You can't so complain wrong. unless you're going to engage. That's, that's just wrong. And I guess I'm giving you the answer when I'm showing you this on the screen here. Um, let's talk about power brokerage. Power brokerage. Let me turn this. I'm sorry. Let me turn on this volume. So and here's another thing. You know, given the okay, condition um, that many black folks are in right now, let me say this, given the condition that many folks are in, folks of African descent, you know, to have the, it requires, you know, a certain level of mental and emotional fortitude to engage the system, if you will, and to engage in the practices that are being suggested to us. And if who's looking at you know really the whys why are folks of african descent not actively engaged anymore in those type of activities why i say because we're full of shit and when i say we're full of shit i'm talking about stress of the human intentional type that is the shit traumatic stress of the human intentional type and we are so full of it it's ridiculous and this is how it is showing itself this is how it shows itself in terms of what happens for people who have been traumatized by other people's shit through intentional harm done by someone else their intent was to harm us. Their intent has always been to harm us and they've harmed us in a way in which it says that whatever we do is for their benefit. And when we begin to do anything that is for our benefit, that becomes a problem and the system is designed to shut it the fuck down. And at some point, people are tired. Now people are working to maintain basic needs. People are working to, you know, kind of recover, if you can, or if you will, from years of neglect, emotional neglect and harm. That's what's happening in the hoods anyway. You know, I'm not sure where some other black folks are coming from yet. If you're in the middle class, if you're firmly in the middle class and you're firmly in a middle class environment and, and economic status, then you may have a different experience than those of us who are in the lower class environmental area. And what we are able to do may be very different than what folks in a solid middle class are able to do mentally and or emotionally. And that is a 
as a thing that seems to be ignored when people admonish us for not participating in this, this, or that, for not engaging in this, this, and that way. It's like people ignore that we are broken. So maybe we can say the system is not broken. However, black folks, for damn sure, our spirits is broken. Our culture has been stripped from us. We have been forced to live another group's cultural story. That is my belief about it. That's how I think about it. That's how I see it. That's based on, you know, years of working, studying, uh, researching, all these different things, and even participating in uh, the system as it is. As it is. And what the outcome has been, just for me and my generation, and then understanding and knowing what has happened in the generations before me, and what is happening in the generations after me, based on the experiences that each generation lives. The generation after me was the quote-unquote crack generation, the children that fell through the cracks, children um, who didn't learn some of the things that, you know, is being discussed. Shit, I look at myself at this point, I'm 58, and I recognize how grossly unprepared I was and still am as it relates to money management, you know, and really understanding and practicing healthy, um, healthy management of my funds and even how to it becomes very overwhelming it becomes very painful it's very confusing I didn't grow up with a whole lot of money so we didn't learn a whole lot about money management and as a result I see the outcome of that for me today it's like I am I am so jacked up when it comes to, to money management it's ridiculous and I have to realize and be patient with myself and recognize, you know, you know, Abner, you didn't learn these things. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. And to not, quote unquote, beat myself up for not knowing. And that's a thing that it seems we like to do with each other. You beat each other up for not knowing shit. And ignoring the fact that we are leaking and hurting in so many ways. And those ways, those are told, we are told to just sort of suck it up and ignore it or something. With no support for changing. Hey. power. If you don't have any sustained power... To broker, you are going to be treated just like your black folks were treated in that salon. Just going out to protest for event. You know, this is one of the things that, you know, I, I kind of disagree because just like Umar, you know, it's like you're, you're blaming the victims here. Johnny on the spot. To sit here and yell and scream about police brutality and discrimination and whatever buzz phrase applies, and then hold a hold a uh, workshop, a hyena yelp, and, and charge money to tell you you're oppressed. That's what Umar Johnson does. So you're telling me but more that than is going to help. Now, if you're going to talk about a broken system, tell me what a broken system is. How are you going to talk about a broken system when you're not even the process, not even voting. Oh, wow. That, just, that makes no sense. You want to choose to go ahead and pay these frauds and tell you what you already know. And you're not, it, it's not going to result in any, any solution. You know, that's because they what he's telling them is validating okay, people what people believe. You know, because again, it's like you're talking about, that, um, you know, see, there's times like this when I'm listening to my sister and, 
And, you know, I'm kind of like, yo, yo, sister, and really? Now, come on. You've taken off your professional hat, if you will, as a clinician and understanding and, and recognizing the whys and the what fors and giving some damn credit to that. That, that. And that's the thing as I experience it and in my work, what people want is just to have their story validated first and foremost. When a, someone, a victim has been harmed and they go and they seek help and they're telling their story, you know, about what happened they are seeking a, you know, some validation that yes, in fact, what happened was an act of injustice or yes, you have experienced a significant loss or yes, I understand your anxiety because the, the, the things that have triggered your anxiety are things where it represents real danger. You know, that that's true. And then we begin to work together to come up with a solution, a viable solution. And so I, I have a really difficult time listening to 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 folks, period, yet in particular folks of African descent ragging on the rest of us, suggesting what we should be doing because you are in a position to do that because you had an upbringing, you had an environment, and you have the mental acuity to do those things. Maybe you have not experienced the same types of harms that many of the rest of us have experienced. And so you have maybe limited understanding. And instead of sort of having conversations to say, why, what's going on? Can we talk about this? Help me understand this from your perspective first, as opposed to dumping your shit on me and dumping your shit on my people. Yo, get out of here. This is Abena Africa coming to you live from the recovery zone of racism, not anonymous, and um, 